when you see like a woman put her shoe on or something and then boom, you're cooked. Dan Schneider. So as far as Dan Schneider goes, like it, it's, it's basically, I don't even know if we can call it a secret, right? Because I don't think it's like a secret at all. It's just something that like everyone knew. And has openly talked about. I know we say open secret, but like, is it a secret? I feel like it wasn't even an open secret. I feel like it was just a thing that happened that people just knew about, but nobody really did anything. Like, even with Harvey Weinstein, there's like rumors and people kind of know and whatever. And, and they just like look the other way. Well, with this one, it's like, I don't think the average person knew Harvey Weinstein was a rapist. But like, if you ask the average person, I'm pretty sure like Dan Schneider loving child's feet is like a very common. is like a thing that a lot of people know. My point is this. There was not youtube videos and youtube investigations about harvey weinstein before the court cases before me too but there certainly were a shit ton of youtube videos and youtube investigations about dan schneider which to me implies that like people did know like normies did know and yet nobody fucking did anything I mean, yeah, look at this. Blame it on George made a video fucking eight years ago. I mean, five, six years ago with 7.7 .7 million views. Like, this is not a secret. Well, let's do a little bit of a deeper dive into it, I think. 90s. Nickelodeon was kid everything. And you better hope that your house had cable. Wasn't there to educate you. We were there to have fun, to get slimed, to be entertained. And this is when Dan Schneider arrives. Nickelodeon's golden boy. He created these shows that were hugely successful for them. No one had ever really done sketch comedy starring kids for kids. He launched the careers of child actors who became major stars. For 20 years, he shaped children's entertainment and culture. Hey, thank you for being here. But that marked one of the darkest chapters. Working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. Dan's treatment of people on his shows was an open secret. So my lawyer filed complaints, gender discrimination, hostile work environment, harassment, and it was so devastating. How safe can any kids be in that environment? There would be even bigger problems down the line with actual pedophiles on set. These are three predators who worked at Nickelodeon, all in a short amount of time. Hey guys, we're ready for you. It was a toxic environment. It made me trust people less. We were there for so many hours. You get comfortable with people until you're not. I had no idea what I was saving my son from. It was a house of horrors. They find this enormous trove of child pornography. The officer said we found Ziploc bags, each one with a girl's name on it. 11 charges of child sexual abuse related to a child actor. It made me wonder, who was being hurt? I've been waiting 17 years for today. It wasn't dealing with anybody on the shows or anything, right? It was a child actor. On one of our shows? Yes. Have you ever told your story publicly before?
So yeah, this was on Max. Back for the GMA. We watching kick again tonight, big dog, basically. But this is like the professional version of it. A cover story, a new documentary is shining a light on what was going on behind the scenes at Nickelodeon, home to some of the most popular children's shows in the 90s and early 2000s. Eva Pilgrim sat down with two of the stars. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, y'all. Watching back some of these scenes and sketches now as an adult, it hits you immediately how inappropriate some of this content was. So much so we can't even air some of them in our story this morning hey, for the boogie. children on these sets. They tell us many of these jokes went over their heads, but the adult behavior was all around them. Wait, what the fuck? This guy literally a day ago? got Dan Schneider on and interviewed him? What the fuck? For children of the 90s and early 2000s, Nickelodeon was home to some of the most popular shows of the era, from the sketch comedy hit, All That, to The Amanda Show. But in the new investigation discovery docuseries, Quiet on the Set, the dark side of kids TV, some of the former child stars behind those shows say they were subjected to inappropriate work environments. One star even claiming he was sexually abused. If we don't get all these people out of here in less than two hours, our lives are over. Drake Bell from the show Drake and Josh revealing for the first time publicly that he is the John Doe victim in the 2003 child sexual abuse case against his dialogue coach, Brian Peck. Bell claims that Peck purposely isolated him from his father, who was also his manager. I think Brian got a sense that my dad was on the watch. And so he started to really drive a wedge between my dad and me. He started talking about how my dad's stealing my money. Nobody likes that my dad's on set. He's a real problem. I was believing it because he's been in this business for so long and he must know more than us. Peck was convicted in 2004, sentenced to 16 months in prison and is now a registered sex offender. Bell says that abuse put him on a path of self-destruction, including two DUIs and a 2021 child endangerment conviction. Nickelodeon saying in a statement, we are dismayed and saddened to learn of the trauma he has endured and we commend and support the strength required to come forward. I can't even describe the feeling to know that there was a monster among, among us. Giovanni Samuels and Brian Hearn starred in All That in 2001 and say Peck worked closely with the child actors. When you saw who the victim was, it broke my heart. I cried. That guy that abused him went to, oh, to work on at the Disney Channel after 60 months in prison? What? We weren't close with Drake, mm -hmm. but we were around him. He was a legend. And so to find out that he was being harmed brutally in, harmed in a in a terrible way what is it, it infuriated me hearn and samuels also speaking about former writer and executive producer dan schneider who nickelodeon parted ways with in 2018 after complaints he created a hostile work environment what was it like working for dan schneider dan <laughs> <laughs> you're asking the two black children on a Nickelodeon set where we were overlooked. The actors were calling sketches written by Schneider's team like on air dare. Yeah. Those were torture moments for all of us. Kearns Dare had him covered in peanut butter and then licked by dogs. My <gasps> on air dare, I was saying, I don't like this. And to see that is and to voice it and, and to have voiced it. I don't like this and to be ignored because, oh, it's funny. Yeah. Is it, was it funny? Who was it funny for? Right. One for me. Hearn and Samuel say My they hope the series there? sparks an important like conversation okay. about the treatment Fossil. of child actors. No, like, Your childhood no. is gonna be a little tainted after watching it, yeah. but I hope that it helps you protect the next group of kids yeah. that comes up. Now about the hostile workplace allegations, um, 
Nickelodeon tells ABC News while it cannot corroborate or negate allegations of behaviors from productions decades ago, it investigates complaints as part of our commitment to fostering a safe and professional workplace environment free of harassment or other kinds of inappropriate conduct. We have adopted numerous safeguards over the years to help ensure we are living up to our own high standards and the expectations of our audience. As for Schneider, a spokesperson tells ABC News his scripts went through multi-layer of executive approval and that quote Dan expected and asked a lot from his teams but he also knows some people did not have a positive experience and he is truly sorry for that quiet on the set the dark side of kids TV a two night event starts Sunday March 17th beginning at 9 p.m. on ID Robin Ooh, that was an eye opening report Eva thank you for sharing that with us well hey there Jim why are they so like jovial and horny about this Thank you to Nickelodeon. Um, thank you to Dan Schneider. Dan, we love you. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you, Nickelodeon. Thank you, Dan Schneider. It's hard to put into words what Dan has done for all of us. I want to thank Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider. He's the guy behind some of the greatest shows on Nickelodeon. His name is Dan Schneider. If you watch Dan Schneider's work, it is completely impossible to escape the notion of feet. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. There was just feet everywhere. Tori, please pour ketchup all over your feet. I still say this is not performing. This is why I'm in Hollywood. Yeah. Eat your cereal, kids. <laughs> hey, Dan Schneider, look what you've done to me. Dan Schneider. Boom. He is responsible for the prolific careers of a bunch of people, bunch of shows that we all. By the way, Brian Peck lied about his felon status at Disney and they didn't do a background check on him due to his previous accolades at Nickelodeon. He got fired after they found out. So Disney didn't willfully ignore his felony conviction. Yeah. I think he only did two. I have <laughs> come to know and love from millennials all the way to. 2013 Nickelodeon tweet asking for feet pigs. Salmon cat tomorrow, right on the bottom of your foot. Take a pic and use salmon cat Saturday and we'll retweet it and follow until our fingers get sore. Yeah, I mean, bro, this is in 2022. You know what I mean? Like they... They reply with this in 2022. It's like not... This is what I mean when I'm saying, like, it's not a secret, right? I mean, this is from BJ Investigates from May 27, 2022, two Gen years Z ago. And everybody above, below, and in between. If you are alive right now, you probably are familiar with something that Dan Schneider has created. He's responsible for the careers of Amanda Bynes, Josh Peck, Jamie Lynn Spears, Miranda Cosgrove, Jeanette McCurdy, and even Ariana Grande. Many more, but that's just to name a few. There were some seriously frightening and worrisome things going on at Nickelodeon Studios during that heyday with his company, Schneider's Bakery. It seems as though Nickelodeon and everyone involved seem to try to sweep under the rug a lot of strange and worrisome behaviors that we're gonna get into today. Now, Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider have been exposed a million times over by many people on YouTube. I have a new video for you guys because it's time to talk about this monster, Dan Schneider. Could they have prevented this? And if so, why didn't they? If you don't understand why the giant foot plays such a big part in this, you will in a minute. Yeah, bro, if Illuminati made a video about it, that's how you know that shit was like so mainstream. You know what I mean? If Illuminati made a video about it, that means someone else made a video about it. Many someone else's made a video about it it's not like she fucking came up with that on her own you know minute hidden behind that orange foot is some disgusting deplorable things you have a foot fetish no judgment here that's all you but it's different when you put that foot fetish 
in the children's TV show. Now that's when it becomes a problem. All his colleagues around him seem to be held accountable, but he doesn't seem to be held accountable. And there was another actress called Alexa Nicholas. She went on Instagram Live. And my mom was like, can you please get Dan? Get Dan here immediately, get the producers here immediately. Someone needs to figure out what just happened to my daughter. So then finally Dan walks in. And Dan has not helped the entire time. And I don't feel comfortable going into details about what I've seen with Dan or like what Dan is. My mom put me in acting like it wasn't my choice. I was six. Bro, one time Illuminati made a video you watched on stream and Chatter tried telling you about the shit she did and you called it drama and dismissed it. Yeah, because at the time it was fucking drama, dumbass. The Chatter was like talking about the chatter was talking about some other shit, like, uh, like yelling at, um, yelling at like fucking legal Eagle or something. Dude, imagine fucking coming in here. Yeah. That chatter was on some dumb shit. Brian Peck was pen pals with John Wayne Gacy and had a painting made by him? Wait, what the fuck? I'm just telling you what I remember. No hate, sorry. Okay, well. I had to support my family, so it wasn't like I was, mm. you know, came out of the womb like, I'm tap dancing and like ready to go or something. It's the thing that I feel the most shame of in my entire life. I, I do not like any of the, the acting work that I have ever, like any of the projects that I've been a part of as an actor. And even talking about it, honestly, my heart starts to race and like, I, f I feel like I almost could cry. So now, according to a website called looper.com, for years, prolific producer Dan Schneider occupied a prominent place in the world of children's television, as we've just discussed. Throughout the late 90s and early 2000s, Dan and his Schneider Bakery banner oversaw numerous hit shows on Nickelodeon, including All That, Kenan and Kel, Drake and Josh, and iCarly at the height of Dan's fame. Bro, this is one of those moments where like me growing up in Turkey, I didn't see any of this shit. Like I didn't, we didn't have that. I, I, or maybe they did have it on television, but I never saw any of this shit. These are the parts of the, oh God, this photo is so fucking creepy. Like I saw bits and pieces of Kenan and Kel, but that's pretty much it. Like, he was likened to fellow TV titan Norman Lear by the New York Times, a comparison that should indicate just how respected he was at that point in time. I don't like, I don't like him. So now let's get into some of the weird stuff that this man is responsible for doing. Like, first of all, we cannot ignore the feet. I think they had Digiturk. I think Digiturk had Nickelodeon or Disney Channel. Did they have Disney Channel? Turklar. Huh. D Smart ve Digiturk'te vardı Nickelodeon ve Josh için izliyordum sürekli. I think oh the other one is Drake and Josh. I I have seen some uh, Drake and Josh as well. <clears throat> but I don't remember iCarly. Maybe I was too old for it. I don't know. Huh? So basically what happened is a, a few of us started getting a little older and we would revisit some of Dan Schneider's shows like on Nick at Night or just reruns or whatever. And we started thinking like this very familiar feeling across all of us like, what the f*** are we watching? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Our Carly was my demographic. I'm 22 years old. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Çevir ve seslendirmelerin aldığı zamandan bize bir gen geride geliyordu. Yeah, that's the other part. We have uh, translation, dubs, and also uh, licensing rights that made it so that I also watched it late anyway. I probably watched Drake and Josh like after you guys watched it as well. So by that point, I was like not as interested in those shows, I think. Yeah, yeah, we did. We have, uh, we have the Disney Channel uh, and we have, uh, yeah, see, it launched on 2009, April 2007. Chat. I left the country in 2009. You know that, right? Like, you're literally talking about shows that were in my life, like, or channels that were in my life for two years by the time I was already in high school and about to leave the country. So...
this type of show came an entire yeah i think this whole type of show showed up a, in the generation after yours no all of the shows i think a lot of these shows were not released in turkey at the same time i think that a lot of these shows came late to turkey as well because obviously as you can see here 2007 is when we got the the disney channel and shit But yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Look, Turkey took a fat L on that front, but I guess it was, it turned into a W as I'm recognizing now, just like the Turks don't see ads at the top of the hour. So that's a big W for them. Whereas you do see ads at the top of the hour, you know, cause you're in America. So You can, of course, avoid seeing those ads at the top of the hour. By subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime, by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, where you will get one free Prime subscription a month. But yeah, here is Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon was on Turkish television before Disney Channel was. But it also had like on and off. And um, the IPs that they show on Nickelodeon were different, I think, than IPs that they show now. Or, I mean, the IPs that they were showing in the same time frame in America. Yeah. Nicolo <laughs> Doan. That's funny. All right, all right, all right. Let's watch this shit. Let's watch this shit. Yeah. Yes! After this, we massage my feet. No, gross. Get in between the toes. It was weird. She's a star, so she gets a big, big, she gets a big, a uh, spitball, spitball shooter thing. I want, hey, hey, hey. No, hey, wait. Can Take we get a close-up of this? Can you get a close-up of this one? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you go, boy. Hey. Amanda, demonstrate. Spitball or pipe down. Oh, no. It's like there. There's a toilet paper no, <laughs> And you get a gallon of fresh spit. And then you spit in your nose. Put a little part in this, no, this, this thing. What do you think of that explanation? <laughs> oh, it was, it was very explanatory. Uh, Specifically the feet. It is absolutely impossible to escape the concept and image of children's feet. Would you smell my foot and tell me what you think? I dare you to spend one day saying yes, yes. Yeah, I'll smell your foot. Thank you. <laughs> wow! Yeah. It's just feet everywhere, feet all around. I have a weird talent. What's your talent? It's okay, it's okay, okay, I'll show you. I can't believe I'm doing this. It even went so far as to permit. At least Tarantino does it for art. It, no, Tarantino at least does it with old people. With, with adults. And not fucking minors, dude. It's for adults, by adults. Consenting adults. Children, on the other hand, cannot consent. Bro, why defend the feet stuff? No, I, I think the feet stuff is gross. But there's a difference between, like, gross and, like, oh, my God, that should be illegal. Why is that not illegal? Do you not understand that? Like, I, I think it's important to parse through that a little bit. Considering that the major factor here is not that, like, things that are gross should be illegal, but instead, um, you know, consent. And who has the capability to give consent and who does not. 
that makes it way, way different. Permeate onto Nickelodeon's actual logo for some time, like in the late 90s, early 2000s, a big foot. It was just feet everywhere. And at the time, as a child, I think I probably just thought it was funny or whatever. But when some of these fans, reporters, journalists started to look back at these shows with a little bit of perspective, they yeah. This is a good day. Chatters think I like feet and I like children's feet is the same sentence. <laughs> Insane, I think. Started to notice that it wasn't just feet being featured on the shows, but Dan Schneider himself from his public original Twitter account was soliciting pictures of children's feet from the audience, from Nickelodeon fans on Twitter. It, like, it's just weird. What is his weird obsession with children's feet? Like, sure, put it in your shows. That's kind of weird. Force Ariana Grande to have her feet stuck in a thing so you can tickle them or lick them or whatever weird you did on that episode. I don't know. I don't know. So basically make your own decision up about the feet. To me, I think it's weird and us over here at bj investigates thinks it's weird as if that's not weird enough we could end the episode there because it's really weird that the man was asking children for pictures of their naked feet with writing on the bottom of it it's just a very weird daniel it's a really weird thing to do but then the next thing that they actually did that i think is really strange was dan would host these recruiting parties for children he would have pool parties and invite all the kids over and be like, oh, we'll take pool. care of the kids. No adults need to come over. So he was having pool parties with these kids that were on the show without any kind of adult supervision going on. One of my friends that used to work on a couple of the shows they did. I mean, this goes back to the mid early nineties. And he has a pool that is the shape of a foot. He would spend extremely large amounts. Oh, the foot pool is fake. I got fake news time get in the foot pool <laughs> brian singer did this as well i don't get why people are into feet that's weird i think it's weird too i don't understand it but feet are a comedy stable in most kids entertainment weirdly enough there's this notion of feet are funny to kids when dan decided to make this his nom de plume Oh, it is a real foot pool is a real pool. It's just not his pool. Very weird that such a thing exists. I don't understand why. I don't know how true it is, but if I'm wrong, it's because the brain, the nerves, or whatever. Are the clothes is the same ones to your genitalia? That's what I've heard, at least. I thought that people liked feet because, like, the Freudian analysis is that your first, you have, like, a your first sexual awakening when you see, like, a woman put her shoe on or something, and then, boom, you're cooked. The goon theory, yeah. Not the same as finding hands attractive. Dude, hands, for the most part, I think is something that women are into. Whereas feet is mostly like men. So that's why one is like seen as like an odd thing but not even that odd. The other is like a gross pervert fetish. Why? Because when men are into shit, we take it to the next level, dog. We go above and we go beyond. Okay? The hand thing, like, yeah, some women are into hands. I don't really understand it. But like, I've never heard somebody, I've never heard somebody get grossed out by like a hand fetish. Or even someone referred to hands as a fetish. Partially because... Partially because women are not as gross as men, on average, about their sexual desires. Freud is a notorious fraud. He used psychology to justify his fetishes. Ever heard of a foot job? Yes, I have, unfortunately. 
I don't understand it. Like, like, it's just not a thing that you can, like, I don't understand how you can get a nut off that way. I, I genuinely don't get it. Hands make so much more sense because girls, they touch by hands. That's just human contact. Feet, on the other hand, don't have any sexual component to me. Hands are used in sex. Feet is not. Yeah, except unless you're a foot fetishist, in which case feet are very much used in sex. They like using feet in sex. Uh, along with the kids in their in their dressing rooms, without any adult supervision in there either. He was just uh, he, he's just a, a sick dude. And people have known about this in the industry for a long time. This isn't anything that's new to to people within within there, and it's not anything new to Nickelodeon either. I don't know why Nickelodeon continues to put up with this guy. So in 1997, what? I don't know why Nickelodeon continues to put up with this guy? Chat, is this real? Why is he smelling Michelle Obama? What is happening? Yeah, he would do this pose as a joke. He did it with a lot of people as a trademark meme. So in 1997, I was discovered in a mall and eventually I got a manager and an agent. And then as I started growing in my career in 2007. Bro, Obama is so clout hungry. He sent his wife to get sniffed by Dan Schneider, dude. My man was destined to be a podcaster from the jump. He was like, I'm going to get that Netflix deal no matter what, okay? He was doing Illuminati rituals. Okay, this is the one thing that I do believe. Like the whole like humiliation ritual. Now I believe it, okay? Now I believe it. Obama, the celebrity president, he wanted to be famous so fucking bad. You know, and my agent um, contacted me and my family about um, possibly getting a good Nickelodeon gig. I personally, at the time, I watched a ton of Nickelodeon and I was very immersed in that lifestyle. So I wanted to pursue it. My mom and she was my manager at the time. She had some, you know, reservations about it. She didn't really want me being exposed like that, especially because in the audition call listing, they did mention like, you know, wear something cute, like wear spaghetti straps or a skirt or, you know, whatever. And my mom, when she told me later on that whenever she saw things like that, she thought that it was a little uncomfortable for people to be telling kids what to wear. How old were you at the time? I was probably around 15, 14 years old. And I was actually considered older at the time for what they were looking for. So in 2007, my agent called about the Nickelodeon show. It was for Zoe 101, but because that show I think was getting canceled at the time, it looks like the Spears family is growing again, but this time it's not Britney Spears who's expecting. It's her 16-year-old little sister, Jamie Lynn. Dude, why are they covering this in the most cheery fashion possible? What the fuck's going on? That's insane. That is... What the fuck? Dude, what was going on in America? What the fuck was going on in America? Oh my god, dude. I'm not going to lie. This is one of those like overcorrective things that Zoomers have done that I'm totally on board with the whole like age gap discourse. Perfectly valid, dude, because the inverse of it is so invalid and so wrong. What the fuck? America celebrating moms. Yeah. Woke culture took this away from us. Back in my day, a 16 year old could could be impregnated by an adult, potentially. Nickelodeon did put out a carefully worded statement saying, quote, we respect Jamie Lynn's decision to take responsibility in this sensitive and personal situation. Our primary concern right now is for Jamie Lynn's well-being, not our show, Zoe 101. They were looking just for anything, and then Dan Schneider's next show was iCarly. So they were looking for, you know, extras or possibly like a lead type of role. So, of course, my agent jumped on that opportunity, and we flew out to L.A. for this audition. And when we got there, it was probably like 200 kids. And then these random agents hand-selected specific 
kids that they liked or, you know, showed some charisma. And then um, once about 40 kids were selected, we were then told to take off our shoes and that we were each going to go into a room to show the producer, who is Dan Schneider, the tape to see who he would want on the show. And, um, the of course, fuck? you know, we always ask, like, what would you like us to be doing once we're in there? My agent told me, you got to just take off your shoes, just, like, run around in front of the camera, you know, talk about how much you love being barefoot. And at the time, even, you know, it was like, okay, that's weird, but it didn't think anything of it because I was still young. Then when I saw other kids doing it, like their parents were like, take your shoes off, like we're going in, like this is it, this is your thing. You know, it was all the kids that were wearing like the short shorts, like the, you know, spaghetti strap tank tops, you know, things that were a little more open and less reserved. And then once we got into the last room to, before my audition happened, my mom kind of looked around and was like, this is wrong. There's just something really wrong about this. And I just, I've never like investigated it further. I just thought that it's like that Dan Schneider was like really into child's feet. That's all I, that's all I know from this whole saga. And I, at the time I was really upset because I wanted to do this. The new cast started with a two week comedy boot camp that Schneider held with the help of the team that included the show's dialogue coach, Ryan Peck. And at the parties, the children would be wearing bathing suits. It would be minimally supervised. And to listen to some children who describe these parties, they would say their parents were not even invited. Interestingly, as an Oklahoma boy, what is wrong with LA Hassan? This is insane, brother. You think, brother, you think they ain't doing pedophilic shit in Oklahoma? What are you crazy? Just not being televised. Okay, that's the difference. <laughs> the fuck. Oklahoma, I think, is literally like the intersection of uh, the capital of sex trafficking, by the way. I guess not fully related, but somewhat related, given its uh, geopolitical position in the middle of the country. OKC will say this shit while the events of Tiger King unfold in their backyard. Enough, most of the kids got discovered by the pool. And I believe, like, it was, like, Megan Fox and Hillary Duff was another one mm -hmm. who got discovered there at the pool. And the parents were so desperate to have their children be famous for whatever reason. I can't relate. You couldn't have gone to the, I don't know, anywhere where there's clothes. I don't know. So then in 2014, I don't know where this falls in the timeline, but Dan Schneider received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Kids' Choice Awards. What's up, Kids' Choice Awards? When I was asked to be here to present the first ever Nickelodeon Lifetime Achievement Award, I was like, no way, it's not going to happen. Not unless you can figure out a way for me to be in two places at once, and you did it. So my body is here in New York, but my heart is out there in L.A. with all of you guys because I want to help honor a guy who has spent his entire life making kids laugh. His name is Dan Schneider, and he's the guy behind some of the greatest shows no keenan don't was on nickelodeon that's why we're honoring him tonight with the special award so to dan i'd like to say thank you you've made more milk come out of more kids noses than anybody else congratulations I'm we are so happy to be here to honor you dan yes you not only changed all of our lives you changed kids tv you no know, it's hard to put into words what dan has done for all of us and all of you out there and all the world so we'll just say thank you dan so it is our great honor to present the first ever nickelodeon lifetime achievement award to a man who's been making all of us laugh for the past two decades put your hands together for the one and only dan schneider so here come big old dan schneider surrounded by a posse of teeny boppers all of them hanging all over the man it's really weird so thank you for making my life great and just making every day so freaking fun thank you guys kids choice the wars 2014 March 29th, 2018, Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery, which is Dan's company, finally part ways. So I guess like allegations had gotten like so bad or whatever, but actually Jake has gotten me an article that I have not read yet. It's by Deadline.com and it's called Nickelodeon Parts Ways with TV series producer Dan Schneider. <clears throat> Exclusive updated. Nickelodeon has ended its long relationship with one of its most prolific creators. 
Dan Schneider. Probably for the best considering the feet thing alone. Here's a quote. Following many conversations together about next directions and future opportunities, Nickelodeon and our longtime creative partner, Dan Schneider, Schneider's Bakery, have agreed to not extend the current deal. Nickelodeon and Schneider said in a joint statement to Deadline the following. Since several Schneider's Bakery Wait, is that projects are wrapping up, both sides agreed that this is a natural time for Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery to pursue other opportunities and projects. This is kind of weird to me considering like he made his whole career on Nickelodeon. Like, I don't know where he thought he was about to go. I mean, I think everything he ever did was on Nickelodeon, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very strange that it would be natural for him to leave this network whenever he made his career on the network. Maybe it had something to do with something else, not maybe natural. Dan and his Schneider's Bakery team have created a string of lasting, groundbreaking hits over the years, including, we've already discussed this, iCarly, Victorious, and the current number one hit show on Nickelodeon, Henry Danger. The statement continued, We thank Dan and his Schneider's Bakery producers, executives, and social media team for their immeasurable contributions to Nickelodeon. And we wish them the best in their future endeavors. And Dan and Schneider's Bakery are proud of the work they did together with Nickelodeon and will all always remain big fans of the network. The decision comes as Nickelodeon has opted to cancel Schneider's latest series, Game Shakers, after three seasons. They go on to say, among other things, I hear there had been multiple complaints of abusive behavior against Schneider filed by members of his staff. I'm suspicious that the existence of a separate entity, Schneider's Baker, indicates Nickelodeon knew something was up for much longer than they care to admit. No, that's normal, dude. The fuck? Even actors create their own production houses. That's not, that should not be your takeaway here. That's like the most normal part of the story. What's going on back here by the robot? Hold on, let's see what's happening. Let's see what's happening. Oh, come on, bro. You cooked up the, who fucking banned Biden derangement syndrome 44? Why would you ban him? Toxic SJW. That's exactly the type of chatter we want. Please unban Biden derangement syndrome. Biden derangement, derangement, mimi scene. He can't even fucking write it right. Oh fuck, I modded him. Oh fuck. I unmodded him, I think. Oh shit. Oops. I modded him and unmodded him. Oh my God. Imagine he just bans everyone. Oh no. Uh, I haven't got my costume on yet. Are we close to bowling? <laughs> Sorry. Caught Jerry in a bad moment there. How much attention does Jeanette need? <laughs> I was trying to avoid What is the young Smith say? What is mom said? He went scary of his joy. Try it again, but more cat life. Okay. For years, Schneider had been under a cloud of suspicion over the treatment of some younger stars of his shows. Among the things that have raised eyebrows are his tweeted photos of the toast. None of this content is new. Dan Schneider is not a kid diddler. You can think of them as creepy all you want, but the rumors aren't true. Wait, what? of his young female stars. Y'all, one thing I will tell you right now is people will actually pay money to look at your feet. I did not know that. I did not know that. That was news to me. But I will tell you that that is the truth. So he's just putting it all out there on the internet for free, these children's toes. I mean, just weird how like, because you're a director of a show that people play on, that you feel like you have access over that person's body to just be posting pictures of their parts. That is gross and weird. These are children. And who was protecting these children? Their parents were the ones dropping them off at the damn pool party. They had to see these tweets about these feats. If I saw somebody tweeting, soliciting pictures of children's feet and they were working with children, I might ask some questions, but these parents. I like the chatters mentality being like, no, you don't understand. Like he didn't actually fuck the kids. Like he just, you know, jerked off to their feet pics. So he's actually not a pedophile. Cause like, that's what he's. Yeah. He just molested them like a little bit. That that like I assume that's the argument that he's trying to make, right? I'm trying to be as charitable as possible. Like, 
He's like, dude, no matter how hard you try, Dan is not a pedophile. He's an ephibophile. <laughs> Who also did suspiciously hire a bunch of pedophiles. Yeah, technically not even a febophile, a feet a file. Just don't seem to have. I don't know. Maybe they did. I wasn't there. Schneider has been well documented as having temper issues for years. And there's these weird videos too. Like you'll see, like he'll come around with like a, you know, remember the video cameras you used to carry around, like VHS cameras, or whatever. He would come around video recording like the stars on the set. It's almost like they would go rigid, like Ariana Grande, like. Hey, what are you doing here? That was amazing. That was one of the better things I've ever heard. Hey! Hi, what's going on here? Nothing. You <laughs> cut out that part. Why are you sitting on the floor of the set? Because we are. They are. <laughs> did you just bark? No. <laughs> no, oh, I did not. It must be the, the you set ghost. Who barked? The set of Ghost Christmas Past. That was really scary. Did you hear that? Yeah. Like, it was very obvious that the kids were uncomfortable. Most people... Most people don't give Dan the benefit of the doubt because he's fat and ugly. What the fuck are you saying, dog? Bro, you have to be baiting, right? Like, what the fuck? Like, what's happening? Are you doing... Fat and ugly solidarity or some shit? Like, what's happening here? I'm trying to understand the angle here. Because this is very, very weird. This gotta be... This has to be Dan's alt account, right? I've seen more inappropriate stuff from the guests you've had on your channel. Dude, come on, dude. We can't be doing this. Like, the middle of the hour ad break, that's always inappropriate if you're not subscribed. I mean, it's true. It is the middle of the hour. But, like, why are you baiting me in the middle of the hour? People being around this creep. So the author says, I hear there was a flare-up last week. This would have been, like, around March 2018. During a meeting Dan had with Nickelodeon executives where they indicated to him that Game Shakers was not getting renewed for a fourth season. Sources say that Schneider's reaction was, at least in part, due to the fact that Game Shakers was about to wrap production on its third season the following day with a cliffhanger season finale, which would leave fans without any closure. So that's allegedly what he was upset about. The author says, I hear at the meeting, Schneider was also told that with his other Nick comedy, Henry Danger on hiatus, another show would move into the production space in the Nickelodeon owned Burbank studio, which has housed Schneider's series exclusively for the past few years. Sources say that Schneider objected to the prospect of having to share the office and production space with the non Schneider's bakery show. So there was a little bit of a turf war, but I think they were already like, you have been accused too much and you gotta go. After the ousting, after the departure of Dan Schneider from Nickelodeon. The New York Times seems to have attempted to actually rehabilitate Dan Schneider's reputation. Schneider's blog and YouTube channel from when he was Nickelodeon's star showrunner captured the way he would interact with the teenage actors and young fans of the show. He posted a video of him spooking the iCarly actress Miranda Cosgrove as she walked into a room. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so mean. But it wasn't that good. I didn't get that scared. You were kind of scared. I was a little scared. <laughs> you, <help> me. <laughs> you get me. You never get me. I just did. Oh my god. I don't get you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that scared me so <laughs> But some people who worked on Schneider's shows asked for anonymity. Because nothing nowadays <laughs> called that he often spent time during the work day interacting with young fans online and then after wait what is this guest starting for a debate first of all no i don't want to debate this issue because i definitely don't have enough information on the subject matter that this guy has my assessment currently is dan schneider kind of weird okay very weird and also it ranges from like really weird and holy shit, this should be illegal to like, oh, that definitely is illegal. How the fuck did that actually happen? I don't want to fucking talk to a dude. It's like it's like if I know nothing about why the world isn't flat and had to debate a flat earther. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> like, like he definitely has a lot of. He came in hot. He's like, "Well, what does Miranda Cosgrove have to say about this?" I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck Miranda has to say about Dan. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I clearly have not investigated the matter as deeply as you have, my friend. Except it seems like you investigated the matter to like <laughs> defend Dan a little bit work he would be texting with child actors about silly matters of teenage internet life former crew members recalled that justice's character had a locker on the set of victorious decorated with photos of young men alongside hi my name is alexa nicholas i was in the dock quiet on set i just want to say i'm a huge fan and thank you for covering this it means a lot i watch you all the time dan is fucking awful yeah well now i'm gonna put this guy against the guy who's defending dan <laughs> eat predators is going to duke it out 1v1 style with the guy who wants to defend Dan Schneider in the chat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Jesus Christ, this shit's crazy. Alexa Nichols is she, her. Sorry. the words do delicious and who's hot one of the photos was a headshot of a young dan schneider who's definitely not hot and there's lots of random stuff in her locker I've, i'm constantly staring at these pictures and i'm just kind of confused by her her artwork <laughs> uh fun fact as well this is dan schneider this is a younger picture of handsome young dan Schneider said the locker decoration was likely added by someone in the art department and that it was never his goal as a showrunner to be popular or recognized. Did she say nice things about me? Because I will tase her. Now, I know that's bullshit. I know it for a fact, Dan, because I saw your ass in a hot tub with a 12, 14-year-old Amanda Bynes. So if you didn't want to be popular and famous or whatever the bullshit lie you told the New York Times, then you wouldn't have been in that hot tub with a preteen slash young teenage girl or anyone else in the hot tub for that matter as for interacting with ands online he said that he did so quote Sick only in very public ways that were fully transparent to his colleague yeah these creeps tell us out loud what they're doing every damn day and then when we find them doing it they go i did it in front of y'all nobody said anything when i was having pool parties for teenagers at my house nope. i don't know why dan has a country accent but he does just because you were a creep in public doesn't mean you weren't being a creep you creep former crew members also said schneider seemed to imagine himself as the king of nick on sunset the network's former soundstage he had a private bathroom next to the one that most of the other staff members had to use three former colleagues recalled occasions when staff members pushed him from one room to another in a roller chair so he could keep working en route <laughs> it was like wally 1.0 he didn't stand up to walk around other than to chase kids around with his damn camera he didn't did he have somebody pushing him around for that he's disgusting i'm disgusted by him over the years i've grown and matured as a producer and leader so i guess that means you just don't have to be held responsible or accountable for anything you've ever done these days after his three-year hiatus schneider seems set on returning to television and reintroducing his brand of comedy to new audiences during a three-hour interview at the beverly hills hotel he discussed the state of children's television and his plan to bring forward an ambitious and very different pilot that he has written and sold to another network i'm assuming it's disney schneider created icarly um so i i know him i know him really well that's the thing where I, well penguins though official podcast 64 with noah monk i was sort of i mean if if that went on i'm fucking, that's that's devastating to me because i don't see him in that light you know so watching clips on youtube for that is, is like like crazy but i mean the foot fetish shit is like okay bro come on like i never really noticed that when i was 15 on the show but of course looking in retrospect it's like oh, okay mm -hmm. okay all right all the pieces <laughs> fell but, into uh, place all the all the yeah i just got 2020 and, and knew what was up did no, he ever um, ask you to take your shoes off or anything like that anything to do with your fit <laughs> no but i took my shirt off on tv at 10 years old so i don't know maybe but Dan Schneider is still back on the scene. In my opinion, total creep. 
total suspicious vibes. The pool parties and the feet pics alone, just too much for me. Coupled with the obvious discomfort and fear that the young actors that we all know about today demonstrated in the presence of Dan Schneider and his video camera on top of the fact that he no longer has a job and I know for a fact he's responsible for making hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more, for Nickelodeon. I cannot see any other reason why he was fired other than misconduct. Now, what the misconduct was, I don't know if I'm even allowed to say it on YouTube, but y'all comment below what your opinion is and what your thought is on Dan Schneider, and we will be back very soon with another PJ Investigates. That's crazy, man. I mean, this is the Dan Schneider scandal of Nickelodeon.